Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our Mindset and Motivation Monday here on the Cabral Concept. So glad you could join me here today. Excited to get into today's topic, which is going to be five daily habits that I personally believe will fix the majority of your problems in life. And I know that sounds like a tall order to fulfill, but hear me out. These are things that I have seen proven not only to work in my own life, but the lives of thousands of other people inside of my practice. And that includes family, friends as well. So one of the big things that we need to look at overall when we're talking about problems in general, problems in general, it's important to say is like, well, how does something even develop as a problem? We have to understand that a problem comes from a certain lack that we feel in life. So let's just go over a few examples. So you might have a problem with your finances or a problem with your job or a problem with your career, right? So that problem is, exists outside of you because you lack something in order to bring that into your life. So for example, if you had a job that paid you twice as much money, well, that might satisfy your financial-based issue, right? That lack-based issue in your life. Or your job doesn't provide the job satisfaction that you wish it did. So you're lacking satisfaction in your job. Another one is body transformation. People want to lose weight to achieve their ideal body weight, or they want to gain weight, put on muscle something in order to achieve, again, whatever their ideal is, their lack of what they have right now for their body. We see this all the time in wellness-based protocols. We're helping people with autoimmune issues, with migraines, with skin issues, with infertility, with hormones, you name it, right? So there's a lack of what they want. The lack of what they want might be Sure, they might want rebalanced hormones, but really that's not the lack that they have. The lack that they have that they feel is the inability to conceive or the not don't have the energy that they want or the clear, clear thinking, the libido, the energy, the drive, the ambition overall in life. That is maybe what they're lacking. Or they have psoriasis, they have eczema, they have a child with food-based sensitivities, right? So there's a lack that they don't have in their life and that's the problem, right? So again, I'm just trying to reinforce there's always this lack which creates the problem. Relationships, well, you lack the intimacy that you want. You lack the caring, the love, whatever it is that you're looking for, that's a lack. And the last one I typically say is a lot of people lack meaning in their life. And that's not meaning from their work or from whatever it is. It's overall meaning. It's overall connectedness. It's a form of or, or looking for some type of spirituality in their life. And so when we discover what it is, and it's very important because a lot of people don't even know that there's a specific lack, right? They're just unhappy in life. They may be complaining in life. I'm sure we all know people like this. I'm sure maybe even a little part of us is that same exact way. But a lot of times it's because we haven't yet figured out exactly what that lack is. Meaning like there, there has to be a level of self-awareness, I always tell people. When the self-awareness is there, then the problem is actually fairly easy to fix. And we're going to go through those, those problem solvers today. But it first starts with just self-awareness. Like, okay, Let's look at what there is a lack of. And it's it's not difficult to find. It's what are you upset about? What are you typically complaining about? What do you feel you want more of? Well, the, the lack is essentially that thing, right? You want more love in a relationship. You want more caring, more understanding. Like whatever that lack is, that's what you're looking for. In terms of body transformation, well, again, you're just looking at it as like, you want to be 50 pounds less, or maybe you want to be 50 pounds more. Like you just look at that specific thing. And then also the, the why behind it. Well, if I was this, I would maybe have more energy. I'd have maybe I'd feel better about myself. Like whatever that thing is, you want to look at that. You always want to peel back the onion. So this is important as we're looking at this because it is not for me or anyone else to tell you what your goals are. I mean, that's really important. Like if you ever share a goal with someone, and I think you do have to be careful about that. I've done podcasts on that as well. But 
you want to understand that it's not their goal. So they can accept it or not accept it, but if it's important to you, well, it's important, right? I mean, you get to decide what's important to you in life. It is your life. It's not anybody else's. Once you are no longer a child, you're 22 years old, and we'll maybe even take it up to 25 years old, like you've had a little bit of worldly experience, your life is your life. And there has to be a certain level of autonomy in your life, not all of it. I mean, you have relationships, you've got friends, you've got family, you've got work, you've got responsibilities. I understand that. But there has to be a certain level of autonomy in life where you get to decide a little bit about what your life is going to be all about. And that is where we get to then choose a lot of these big ones. Maybe it is career, maybe it is body, it's wellness, it's spirituality, it's relationships, something around there, right? We get to have a little bit of control around that. Well, what I say to you is this, is that when we're talking about goal setting, which is essentially making up, like creating that, getting rid of that lack in life, all right? So we've discovered the problem is this, all right? So that's what we're talking about, fixing the problems, right? So we discovered the problem. Well, now our goal is to have essentially the opposite of that. Um, not enough uh, or, or just not in the relationship that you want. Okay, well, the opposite is then being in a relationship that you want. Being 50 pounds overweight, well, the opposite then is getting to your goal weight, right? Uh, having an autoimmune issue, the, okay, then the goal is not, the goal is to be healthy, right? Not to have an auto, autoimmune issue. That's not the goal. The goal is actually to be healthy. So we have to set that. So as I'm taking you through these five daily habits today, we have to understand is that we have to get just crystal clear on what it is that we want. And the way that you get crystal clear is you discover these are the things that I'm upset about the majority of the time. And you'll realize that it's only a couple things. And you, when you realize that, that should actually be a sigh of relief. Because when you realize that there's only a few things that you were truly upset about, and then all the other things revolve around those one or two things, that if you fix the one or two things, everything else in your life gets infinitely better. That means your level of happiness goes from maybe like a six every day to a eight to nine every single day. Because you fix just the one or two things which fixed everything else in life. So you really do have to understand that you need to figure out and just be self-aware enough to say, this is what I'm upset about. Now, the big thing is this. Most people, not most people, some people will take it that far. Some people will decide to say, okay, these are things I'm most upset about. I'm not happy that I wake up every day with low energy, brain fog, and just stressed overall because I'm just irritable, low mood, all these different things. If I fix that, then I think my relationships would be better. I'd probably have more energy and maybe I'd put a little bit more into my career. And if I had more energy, I'd probably want to go to the gym and eat a little bit better. So we can see like, yeah, they want to eat better. They want to go to the gym. They want to lose a little bit of weight. They want to have better relationships, like all these things. But it, for them... It stems from they wake up exhausted every morning. So what do we need to do? Do we need to work on relationships right now? Do we need to work on, um, you know, the go to the gym or whatever it is? Maybe, maybe not. But we know that the one domino that if we get that right of getting more energy will then enable them to be better in all of those areas of their life. So that's what I talk about the snowball effect or the domino effect is that look for the big mover, the big driver, which is holding you back because you know what it is better than anybody else. Whatever's holding you back from achieving your goals, from making up for or getting rid of that lack in your life, there is something there, all right? So we're going to start off these top five right now. And, and I want to share with you this, that, that there is always a way to do this. So again, like there's always a way to do it. It may take a little journaling. It may take a little time. Take a week. Take it two weeks, but start to work through it every day. Not sometimes, start to work through this. And let me go over them right now. So first things first, we're getting crystal clear on what that lack is. And then we are achieving, we're setting a goal of the opposite of that. So let's just stick with the, let's just stick again. Someone says, you know, uh, my relationships aren't there. I'm always irritable. I'm just not in the mood. I don't necessarily want to talk. I'm tired. Um, the other thing is like, okay, I've, I don't even want to go out at night. I have low libido, like all of these things. And that's why the relationships not working. Okay. Got it. So what does that mainly stem from? They're tired. They're, they're irritable. They're run down. They're burned out. Okay. The other one is, well, they stopped going to the gym. They start eating so well. Now they're not so happy about how their, their body looks or you know the uh, level of muscle tone or the energy or the endurance they have or whatever it might be, right? So, okay, they don't like that part. 
And, and overall, they feel like they're aging at a bit more of a rapid rate. So they're again, they're not happy about that. Okay. And so then they have less ambition. They have less drive. Again, we can see how this affects basically every area of our life. So what do we do? Well, we go to why do you have such low energy, right? And again, the person doesn't know why. That's okay. You don't have to know why yet. You just have to know what that domino is. So the domino in this case for this person is they have low energy, which leads them to be lower mood, irritable, no ambition, no drive, no libido, just don't want to do anything because they're exhausted. We see that all the time in our practice. So what do you do? Well, you're eventually then going to get help for that, which again, we can talk about this through the show, but all you need to do for the first step is figure out the domino. And there can only be one or two. You can't have a million things to work on. You'll achieve none of them. You won't. I've already tried it before. It doesn't work. I've tried it for too many years. Set goals of trying to achieve 100 different things, like all sorts of wild um, goal-setting things. They didn't work. You, you do a lot of things, but you don't move very far forward in life. And the reason is that you really can't work on, that's what I've discovered probably over the last five to six years. You can only work on one or two things. That's it. So choose the one or two. And you might say, well, I have five things I want to work on. All right, choose the one or two that will then likely allow for those next three or so to become a reality. Because the thing is, if you focus on five, none of them are happening anyways. So you might as well focus on one or two, knock those out over the next six to 12 months, and then just move on to the next. Because no matter what, 12 months from now, if you're working on five things, probably won't happen, right? Unless you're a rare individual and you're just really great at, at goal achievement. And hey, maybe some people are, and that's great, more power to them. But let's start at one or two. It's more manageable, all right? So let's get crystal clear. Focus on the one or two dominoes that make everything in life better, all right? So that's what we need to do. That's step number one. It's not difficult, right? Just takes a little time, a little self-awareness. Work on it. I know that you can achieve that part. Now, number two is this. Take those one or two goals, right? In this case, achieving energy. That's it, getting energy back. Now, we're gonna figure out how do we do that? And then we're gonna create a 12-week action plan and if it needs longer, great. We're going to create then another 12 weeks and then another 12 weeks and another 12 weeks. But we're never going to do more than 12-week marathons, okay? Never going to do more than that. That's part of my 12-week year-based philosophy. Uh, I'll try to link up one of those shows here today at, at 2313, stephencabral.com forward slash 2313 for the big three takeaways today and the, all the show note links. So here's the thing. Okay, so you then need to see an integrative health practitioner, your local naturopathic doctor, someone that is going to be able to share with you why you have low energy because you don't know, right? And that's okay, right? There's a lot of things that I don't know. And I just go to the person who knows. Honestly, that's what I figured out in life is the easiest way to do it. Why? I've spent 25 years doing what I do. I can answer people's questions pretty easily. It's because I've done this a long time you know, 12 hour, 10 to 12 hour days, five plus days a week for 20 plus years leads to just a lot of experience, seeing a lot of people, all that. Well, there are people in every field that have that experience. So I don't need to learn a brand new field. I don't. Like if that's not an, of an interest to mine, I don't need to learn those things. Like so I can ask someone, how do I do this better? And they will literally They'll just take the 25 years of knowledge and they will just condense it and be like, that's how you do it. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And, and again, so that is your, that's your way to do it. Now, again, you might say, well, I can't work with a coach. Totally understand. But there are also a lot of books for $20 or less that you can purchase and you can follow also the protocols in, in one of those books. So I'm not going to go over that today, but it's you're going to do something and it's going to be set up over a 12-week base plan. That's the goal. That's the idea. That's what you want to do. All right. So you're going to set it up and that's what's going to happen. In this case, the energy, let's say, is from imbalanced hormones. Let's say, let's say for male, it's lower testosterone. And let's say for woman, it's estrogen dominance from lower progesterone levels. Okay. So they might run something like a stress mood and metabolism test. They're going to get their results back and they're going to find out those hormones are off. 
They're going to get a protocol from their integrative health practitioner, their local naturopathic doctor, their equal life coach, whoever it may be. And they're going to begin to work that plan. Then they're, they might retest every 12 weeks or so, starting to feel better. Okay, we good. Okay, we're going to start to change this, this, and just continue to improve, right? So they're going to follow a plan. But no matter what, you're going to get a plan from a book, an online course, a coach, a doctor, a guru, whoever it is, right? So that's what you're going to do. Crystallize the plan or crystallize the need. Find someone with the plan. You're going to model success. Life is way too short to figure out everything else on your own, to figure everything else on your own. You're, it really is. Honestly, that's what I've realized. Like people are just trying to become experts in things overnight because they read, you know, an article. And, and I just, I just say to people, listen, you, your life is busy enough. It really is. Like you're going you're gonna to be exhausted just trying to learn all the things. And there's going to be so much contradicting uh, evidence from one side to the other. You just need to stick to a plan and follow it through. So the third one is this. Every single day begins the night before. It really does. If you wake up without a plan for the day, as they say, you're planning to fail. You really are. You can't just rely on willpower. I just did a show on that. You can't wake up and be like, oh, now I'm going to plan my day. Because again, if you're like this person with no energy or super busy life, they've got a family, they've got a lot going on, they've got a lot of demands, you wake up, you're already pulled in a million different directions. And you're tired. You don't have the ability to do that. You're going to plan your day the night before. And ideally, you'll follow my podcast that I did on throwing out your to-do list. We'll try to link that up one today, that show up today as well uh, at 2313, stephencabral.com forward slash 2313. Do this, throw out your to-do list. I mean, the most important thing is that you do not rely on a to-do list. You literally want to look at a schedule and set instead, and I take you through all of that. So you have to plan your day the night before. It is a game-changing decision you can make, and it will allow you then to actually implement the actions that you need to take based on that 12-week plan. All right, step number four is this. Whatever that goal is, like literally whatever the goal is, to improve your career, improve your relationship, to improve your body, improve your health, or improve your spirituality, no matter what it is, you're going to work on it first thing in the morning. It's another thing that I've discovered. You can't wait until the end of the day. You've got family, you've got work, you've got friends, you've got a lot of demands, and then you get tired by the end of the day. If it's important to you, you'll carve out time in the beginning of the day. So then, of course, there's always a rebuttal. But I don't have time in the morning. I have to get my kids ready. I've got to get to work. I have this, that, or the other thing. I get it. I mean, I totally understand. It is challenging. But here's the thing. Are your goals worth achieving? If they are, then we need to make the time, right? So what do we do? Well, we have to then shave off a little time the night before so you can wake up a little bit earlier. I'm not asking you to get less sleep. I'm just asking you to go to bed a little bit earlier, wake up a little bit earlier. And the reason is that whatever that goal is, we need to work on it first thing in the morning. If it's a wellness plan, okay, no problem. We're going to get our meals prepared for the day. We might get in a walk earlier in the morning. We might listen to some meditation. Whatever it is that your book, course, or practitioner laid out for you in terms of a wellness-based plan, you're doing a lot of that front-loaded in the morning. Why? You have to get it in. You have to get those things in. If your blood glucose levels are high, you're going for a walk, you walk, you're doing some fasted cardio, you're doing something, right? You're planning your meals, you're making your smoothie for the day, like you're literally doing whatever it is that you need to do in order to move that wellness goal forward. If you're trying to advance your career, you might be studying something, you might be taking a certificate-based course, uh, you might be working on a project, you might be moonlighting on the side, like I don't know what it is you're doing, but you're getting it done in the morning. It doesn't have to be the only time you work on it, but the thing is, if you work on it first thing in the day, it will be on your mind the rest of the day, and that's a good thing because you want your mind on your most important goal the majority of your day. I want to repeat that one more time. You want your mind on your goal, your most important goal, the majority of your day, and that is because the things that we focus on the most get worked on the most, and they typically are achieved. And that's because, as they say, what gets measured also 
is motivating in order to get done, right? It's just like, that's just the way that it is. If you are constantly assessing, am I working towards my goal? Hey, I'm working on my goal. It's also satisfying. You're doing something to move forward every single day. And if you start your day that way, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get the other snowball effect where you will continue to work on that through the day. The last one is this. This is so important is that you celebrate the small wins along the way. So if you have to lose 50 pounds, celebrate every five pound weight loss, every single five pound weight loss. First week, down five pounds. Two more weeks, down another five pounds. Celebrate those wins along the way. And the reason is that celebrating, rewarding, is telling your mind and nervous system, you did good. Do more of that more celebrations will come. It's literally hardwired into our brain anyways for a reward dopamine-based system. You may as well take advantage of that. So don't always be frustrated that, oh, you know, you know, I should have lost six pounds, but I only lost five. Celebrate the five. You did great. Are you moving forward towards your goals? Then you did something. Celebrate that. Give gratitude that you are on your way. Trust me when I tell you this, that... As they say, it's about the journey anyway. The journey to losing 50 pounds, the journey to gaining 50 pounds, the journey to a new career, to a new body, to new health, to new spirituality, to a new relationship. Literally, you will look back as that was amazing. It was hard work. It was challenging. But you had to change inside of you in order to achieve something that you never had. And by doing that, that is where the satisfaction comes from. Sure, you might like gaining 50 pounds, losing 50 pounds, getting that energy back. I have no doubt that you will. You will. You'll very much enjoy that. But guess what? As the type of person that you are becoming, you'll say, wow, if I did that, maybe I can do this as well. And you're going to set that next goal. And guess what? You'll be on your next journey. There's nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with being a human being, right? Continuing to up-level their life, but just make sure that you do take some time to celebrate all of your hard work, all of the goals that you've achieved and that you will achieve in the future, and that you're enjoying the process along the way so that you can be a little bit kinder with yourself, a little bit gentler with yourself, and just understand that everybody has struggles. They might not have them in the same exact area that you do, but they do struggle. So this is simply one way that you can work every single day on the one or two most important things in your life that as you begin to work on those right away, you'll become infinitely happier. You will. Once you know that you've set down a path of growth, of opportunity and reaching your potential, you really will be infinitely happier. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you so much as always for tuning into the show. Do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.